Hi, Andrew here. A short while ago, you saw James test the FK Bruno or F Bruno 7.5 millimeter field pistol. And I know a lot of you, if you're ammo nerds like me, have been dying to see some numbers on gel performance and velocity from this thing. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to get out to the field. We're going to shoot this field pistol in the field against some gel and see how it does. Okay, so I have some mixed thoughts on this. Um, for one thing, it's definitely unique. There aren't a whole lot of other pistol cartridges out there that can do what this does. And as a friend of mine, uh, Matt from Buffman Range mentioned, this is essentially SBR 762 by 39 performance out of a pistol, like an actual honest to God pistol. Of course, a real 7.62x39 has a better ballistic coefficient and there are some bullets out there that are probably better designed to do what this does. But, still, a 90 grain bullet at 2,000 feet per second is pretty impressive. And then we look at what it did in the gel. And I'm thinking, they didn't really put as much R&D into designing this bullet as they probably should have. It's billed as high terminal effect. There's a big picture of a boar on the box, indicating that people might use it for hunting wild boar. And it does have a great deal of penetration, and that's a good thing for hunting critters of all kinds. Almost a yard of penetration <laughs> is pretty impressive. And I know you sense a butt coming. The very beginning of that wound track there, where we saw the petals of the hollow point break off almost immediately, it looks almost like that G2 RIP garbage that's been floating around. I'm not impressed. It, those fragments do come off of the track a little bit, and at 2,000 feet per second, those fragments should help contribute to wounding a bit. But the disruption caused isn't very deep, and what we're left with is a small 30 caliber bullet that punches a small 30 caliber hole really deep. So how useful is that really? I, I'm not sure, I'm not convinced one way or the other. I would like to hear your thoughts on it. But while I have you, I do have some thoughts on shooting the pistol in general. And I disagree with James on a couple of things. Um, he did an excellent job of doing a review of the pistol so I'm not going to try to review the pistol over the top of his work, but there were two things that I kind of disagree with. One, the recoil is a bit more stout than 40 caliber. It's kind of like shooting a lighter 10 millimeter load, like a 155 grain TAC XP or something. It's definitely harder recoiling than 40 caliber, but maybe not so hard as some of the really full house nuclear, like Underwood 180 grain gold dot or something like that kind of in the middle. Second, and this is probably because James is such a huge Glock fanboy, I actually didn't find the trigger that great. Uh, it is reasonably light. It is a single action trigger, but there was a bit of gritty creep in the take up. I don't think a single action pistol trigger should have any take up, and it definitely shouldn't be gritty and creepy like this one is. Frankly, Almost every stock Beretta has a better single action trigger than this does. Almost every stock SIG does. The trigger on my standard polymer frame EAA Witness is better in the sense that it has about the same kind of uh, creep, but it's less gritty. <laughs> and I am very picky about triggers. I, I will readily admit that. I'll tolerate a kind of sort of meh trigger like a Glock. It's all spongy and mushy, but it breaks fairly cleanly. And a 1911 can, even a stock 1911 can have a pretty decent single action trigger. But if you're going to pay eight grand for a pistol, it had better be perfect. It had better be comparable to Nighthawk Custom or Wilson Combat or other full custom. I mean, 
you can get a really, really nice trigger for $3,000. And frankly, you can get a much better trigger than this one for like $800. Does that mean that this pistol is a piece of garbage? No, of course not. Is it worth eight grand? I don't think so. You may find that kind of value in it. And to be fair, this may not be typical for these pistols. The, the, I may have gotten a lemon. I couldn't say. I definitely wouldn't buy one without putting my hands on it, especially if the feel of the trigger is really important to you. What is this pistol good for? Well, at the very least, it's probably a decent pistol for longer range competition, but you're going to need a gunsmith to smooth up that trigger a little bit for you. If you have any questions, if you disagree with my assessment, or if you just want to talk about how Rogue One is still the best Star Wars movie yet, leave a comment below. As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel a great deal. Definitely check out our sponsor. Head on over to ProxyBid's website and check out some of their gun options. If you have the time, please support us on Patreon. That helps us bring you good content like this. As always, have a great day.